Hello everyone, welcome to Mr. Ben Show. Welcome to another reaction video. Today there's a Paradox Showcase. Paradox Presents, I think is that what they're calling this? Paradox Announcement Show. It's presented by Xbox. I found intriguing that it was presented by Xbox. The last few Paradox Showcases we have gotten have not been great, but Xbox being behind it, maybe it's better. Maybe it'll be like the developer showcase that we just got around those lines i'm interested i don't play a lot of paradox games my roommates do but you know they're doing the vampire the masquerade and all of that where where is that game who knows maybe we'll get an answer today i doubt it i fucking doubt it that that game's vaporware yeah i also just got a lunch so i'm gonna be eating that so fucking deal with it let's react to some video games journey through our game alive? universes, a show packed with the biggest news across the board. A new adventure game from Hairband Schemes, a new game from Rod Humble and the team at Paradox Tectonic, and something huge Her from Colossal Order. Her accent is very interesting. And news and updates from a bunch of our titles, such as Crusader Kings, it's Europa like only Universal, on the back and Surviving of the Of all of her words, that's so strange. This show is for all our players out there. It is for you who take the art of city building into perfection, creating the city of your dreams. It is for you who want to see the great empires clash and change the course of history, or maybe just want to stir up some juicy intrigues at a royal wedding. It's for you who can't wait for the next big adventure with mysterious secrets and lethal discoveries. This show is for you. The teams are yeah, with us in the studio saying. today. The hype is real and we can't wait to share it with you. But before we let this lineup of games loose, we're gonna unleash another natural force upon you. The CEO of Paradox Interactive, Frederick Wester. This the so, weekend? first and foremost, <laughs> welcome to you all. Are they just playing the weekend the as his intro music? Um, we're super happy to uh, to show this to you today, and um, I think we've all sh had a secret at once that we've been dying to tell the world, but we just haven't been able to. Maybe we've been prevented by the rules of the stock exchange, or maybe you've had a project that just hasn't reached the state where you feel comfortable enough to show it to the world. We know exactly what you feel like. But here today, luckily, we have a couple of projects who reached that stage. So we're going to show you a handful of new games. We're going to show you a range of DLCs and updates for our current games. And we're obviously going to update a couple of the games that we've already announced but are yet to be released. But you're not here to hear me talk, obviously. You're here to watch the games. So let's just move on to it. And here's the first trailer. Oh, okay. Very difficult. I thought Never. it was, Have he was I just taking weird pauses in the videos. Uh, Only a true master could. I got skipping. it. Ooh, only a true master, huh? Exactly. These fingers are the pride of Cairo. Did I ever tell you about the time? Are those famous fingers done yet? Uh. Uh. Corporal, check it out! Anyone spare a match? Well, what do you know? Didn't even get to use my gun. There are other ways to solve problems, you know? Well, there are lots of solutions out there. 
Wrestling, punching, oh, and uh, running. Oh, plan C again? Jagged Alliance. The Lamplighters League and the Tower of the End of the World. Okay. What's up, Stockholm? Wish we could be with you, but we're here in Seattle finishing the game. We're excited to tell you what we've been working on. We're Hairbrain Schemes. You may know us from our other games, the Shadowrun Trilogy and Battletech. Our new game is called The Lamplighters League and The Tower at the End of the World. It's 1932, and a secret occult war is nearly lost. The forces of evil are so close to victory, claiming the very source of magic itself. The best of the best are all dead, so you'll need the best of the worst. Thieves, scoundrels, cutthroats, and traitors to stop them. Just like our other games, the Lamplighters League features turn-based tactical combat. But unlike our other games, I don't this one shade adds a real-time infiltration thing, phase. Because like, real time, you'll scout the enemy, fine. exploit the position before deciding or what things are going to get art styles wow. inherently. I but like lowering the risk. This art style. So I'll go around and I'll pick off key enemies that I don't want this in my fight. Look. So I get to pick and choose how I engage. You can just steamroll your way down it looks one way like, It makes it look options, like a free-to-play uh, game. It kind of really depends on how you, how you want to play. You never seem to run out of like, like the depth of choice. Oh. Right, and it's just, it's know. constantly surprising. Right? And even when things look really dire, you can like snatch victory from defeat. <laughs> you can also snatch defeat from victory, <laughs> but like, you know. <laughs> I do think one of my favorite things about the gameplay is that combinatory factor is finding like. those combinations not just of characters bouncing off of each other yeah. but how can i use the this environment fish, this pack what so tightly together best for this mission yeah. compared to another mission i really really appreciate the the focus on story and the focus on character um, and the ability to kind of see these people change and grow over the course of the game. I like the mix, the mix of a problem to solve to keep these characters alive while I grow more attached to them every mission. They're very human and they don't come together without friction, so it's pleasant uh, to watch them interact with each other as they try and get out of tough scrapes. Yeah, we made it so that they all have things to say to each other both on and off the field. You know, we really tried to make them as much of a, like a team, a, a reluctant team at first, but a, but a team as possible. Everyone here are the best of the the worst, so to speak. They are rogues. These are not the people you look to to save the world. It is about them doing what they have to do to survive and doing what they have to do to really just get ahead. When you play and you try different characters, um, you know, I've said it before, but it's kind of a new experience every time. Thanks for watching. And now back to you in the studio. Cool. Mr. Some Monsters, the Lamplighters League is a thing, and it's coming out this year. We're off to a good start, but we want more. I believe they said there will be there three go. new games here, along with the DLC to others. A time for that was one festivity of three. and games, but also an occasion to Crusader build alliances. Crusader Kings 3. Some even bloodier than the martial feats on display. An yep. unhappy princess. That's the the dude in the crown from the art. <laughs> One whose virtue and valor can restore glory the to her fate. Titular family. Crusader King. Or one who will protect her name by hook or by crook and help her get revenge. Real strategy requires cunning. I thought that kid was about to just stab a bitch. Nope. Was that a DLC announcement? What the fuck was that? Alex, it seems like
like you're really giving the role players out there what they want. We are indeed. This uh, expansion is full of things for the role players. You can take your entourage and set out on the road, go on a great tour across your realm, or set off to foreign realms to participate in tournaments, among other things. Wow, that sounds okay. like a lot of fun. What will you be able to do more exactly? You will be able to um, become the grand the champion of tournaments I don't get by going any of to that various realms trailer. and participating. Of course, oh, well, said, cool. there's a lot of other things. You can uh, take out some extra taxes from your vassals on a grand tour. You can arrange grand weddings. What do these all have in common? Intrigue. Why Intrigue? You put that in the trailer? Well, it wouldn't be Crusader <laughs> Kings without it, right? What? How can I use these sort of festivities and events to my advantage? You can, for example, enact vengeance upon your rivals by inviting them to a feast or a wedding and eliminating their entire family. Or you can just show the world how grand ah. you are and that you are the best. You know that scene from Game of Thrones? All right. Well, what you will happen that exactly if I win a tournament? <laughs> well, you winning made that is quite hard, mm. and there are many other reasons to go there, of course. Mm. Uh, if nothing else, hosting it will make you seem incredibly grand. And then if you manage to win, you will increase your skills and uh, you can impress most people in the world. All right. But what will we wear? What about the fashion? Oh, we are introducing armor through the ages and fashion specifically um, showing the early and late Western ideals of the time. All right. Why aren't we showing Interesting. This? So, you also are going to drop some free content Naturally. together with this, yeah? So when you set out on a journey, on a travel to faraway lands, a regent will rule in your stead. And of course, you can also be this regent, which means that you have plenty of opportunities for uh, underhanded and some peaceful ways of taking over a realm. All right, when will we be able to play this on PC? So, we do not have a date. Yet, oh. but you can wishlist now. All right, well, you heard him. Go over there, wishlist the game, but what about the console players? This spring, the console players will have access to the Royal Court. All right, well, thank you so much, Alex. Thank you. We are always on the quest to find the Paradox Games of tomorrow. And there's plenty of up-and-coming developers out there who share our love for endlessly replayable experiences. And we have created a special mission unit who are on a mission to show and find the next thing. And um, this is what's next for Paradox Arc. Okay. Do the teleprompter break? That looks like a mini clip game. <laughs> we got mechs. We got tactics. Megabellum. That's a horrible name. Or it's really dope. I don't know. The next installment of the epicest fantasy series. Now with enhanced graphics. Oh, uh, it, it's still pixel art. Really? Gather your party of pixelated bodies. And roll. 
roll the dice in this groundbreaking game of turn-based RPG adventure. We'll explore legally distinct dungeons. Fight ghastly goblins? Grind uh, windows, okay. Good marginal upgrade. Good music. Epic and funny finishing voice line. Please, buy this game so I get to keep my job. Boom! Three in a row, just like that. That was intense. Okay. Lots of exciting games to look Lots forward to from Ark. Uh, Dennis, tell us what just went on on the screen there. So, the first game we saw... Uh, I mean, that's four new games. The new DLC called The Wolf Wars. Mm. The second we saw was Mechabellum. Oh. And this is our new right. auto battle. The first one was Mechs. DLC. The Mechs. Yeah. yeah. And the mm -hmm. third one we saw was the third that's installment of Night and Pen and Paper 3. Cool. Yeah. So when will we be able to play all of these cool games? Across the Obelisk, you'll be able to play on the new DLC. You'll be able to play on March the 30th. Mm -hmm. uh, Mechabellum, you'll be able to play on May 11th. Yeah. And Knights of Pen and Paper 3, you'll be able to play tomorrow. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Not a shadow drop. you just tuned in, what did you miss? But well, we just announced the Lamplighter Sneak, for a, next a new game drop. <laughs> where you will be able to steal, sneak, and shoot your way around the world. We discovered tours and tournaments in Crusader Kings, where the festivities doesn't always pan out the way it was intended for everyone involved. We have a bunch of news and updates for our games, so don't go anywhere and remember, we promised you something big from City Skylines, and it's coming soon. Something but I can big. see that Fred is back, and I bet it's for an important reason. Over to you, Fred. Thank you, Paula. Um, so we've been asked questions of what our studio in Berkeley, Paradox Tectonic, has been up to. And we're happy to tell you that it's a new game, but not only that, it's also a new genre to Paradox. So it's something super exciting and something that is incredibly new to us that we can explore and take further. But um, not only, we're going to tell you a lot more about this game going forward uh, during the spring, but we're going to start with a little teaser trailer here at the Paradox uh, Announcement Show, and it starts now. Second Life 2. <laughs> They're having a separate event for it. Life by you! Mark March 20th in your calendar for the announcement event. And subscribe to the YouTube channel. You will have this teaser trailer there too for you to analyze and, uh, and dissect. Now, dissect this. what? We got Templar ships. Universalis? Wow, you pulled us straight into the action with that trailer. Sonia, come on up here. Tell us hey, about Paula. this expansion. Well, this expansion is the newest uh, Europa Universalis 4, and it's going to be epic, it's going to be amazing, it's going to be deep and global. We are going to cover Spain, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, also France, Britain, the Ottomans, uh, China, Russia, Japan. So those uh, are a little bit of the countries that we wanted to change, kind of, right. to make it more global and more fun. How, but how did you decide on this theme? 
Well, if you think about this, uh, these countries are the most played by, by our uh, players. Okay. So we really wanted to do like a, something challenging, something new, something fresh for them. Um, so we really wanted to change the whole experience for them so they kind of feel that uh, we wanted to give some love. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> but if I'm then replaying one of these great empires, mm -hmm. what new things will I be able to discover there? Well, we are adding new mechanics, mm -hmm. uh, new mission trees. So kind of if you're one of play uh, with Spain, for instance, you will have a, a new complete set of, of missions. Uh, we are also adding branching missions, which is extremely fun to play mm -hmm. because you kind of decide um, the faith of your nation. Uh, and of course, uh, government reforms, uh, state and privileges, show uh, the games, game. of course, music pack, all in. We I went love all you talking about the game. You I would like to see did, I don't know, screenshots or something. You have a whole giant well, soon, TV behind yeah. you. Uh, just wish list it now. <laughs> all right, wish list it is. Yes. Thank Thank you. <laughs> Here's a quick look at more great Paradox games coming out real soon. A power older than time has returned. Free from their imprisonment, ancient wizard kings come seeking lost magics and new realms to conquer, turning all whom they encounter by choice or by force. Through strife, champions arise. New unities are founded. And powerful arcane knowledge Unlocked as gods and mortals clash, the forces unleashed will be a new age of wonders. It's wonderful. Okay. I remember that name. really pretty. They're gonna announce DLC? No? Maybe? No! But Stellaris! Hilly! It was kind of like a nothing trailer for that update. <laughs> Just like, okay, sure. Again? Oh, all right. I'll tell you the story. When they arrived, those early days were filled with hope and marvel. All that knowledge, all the answers to the mysteries of the universe within our grasp. But we soon realized the knowledge came with a price. The visitors came seeking not friends, or even allies, but subjects. 
their true intentions became clear. Then what happened, Mom? The spirit of our people could never be broken. Never. And eventually, we reclaimed our home and forced them to leave. And we showed them like bird people. People. <laughs> never mind. Can't speak, I guess. Will they come back? They are still out there. But the next time we meet them, we will be prepared. Okay. Is that a new game? Ends in like a week. More information about Rebirth, the new expansion Just from Xbox Surviving One. the Aftermath is Lasse. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Is it possible to come out on the other side of the Aftermath? Yes, and that is precisely the theme and also a new endgame goal for this DLC. We are literally and figuratively taking players to greener pastures this time. Yeah, and I saw in the trailer there were lots of greenery there. There were farming going on. Tell us a bit about that. The main new feature here is terraforming. Okay. So survivors can finally turn the environment into oh, so a clean and lush once again. And there's, mm. of course, new buildings and mechanics that come with that. Yeah, and I could see some mon insects monsters that look pretty intense. What was going on there? It's never that easy with this game, is it? No. <laughs> This time we have a new threat called the blight. Mm. And that is a disease that spreads throughout the world and it infects people and animals alike. And also it turns the environment into a breeding ground for these blighted creatures. So players need to push back, research the infected and yes. that way overcome the challenge this time. All right, yeah, no, you're never making it easy for us. That's for sure. Uh, but you're here with Rebirth, and you know what? I feel that it's we're coming sort of full circle here because the first time I met you, I don't know if you remember, you were wearing a full-on hazmat suit. I can't forget that. <laughs> no, you were announcing the game at yes. the stage at PDXCon, right? And now you're back here with new hope for the aftermath, and you even had a little plant in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. we come a full circle with this DLC, and it is a perfect oh, ending for the first season okay. of Surviving the Aftermath. And I'm and really excited about this DLC. They're not explaining DLC, so any of this. really should <laughs> wishlist it now. Yes. Thank you so much, Lasse. We have a big birthday coming up, and when we celebrate, we like to throw a big-ass party. And the party gets so much better when we are sharing it with millions of city builders out there. We're talking about City Skyline's birthday and the awesome community of city players around the world. We have saved a birthday gift just for you. And I'm going to hand it over to Fred and Marina, who are going to deliver it straight to you. Thank you, Paula. Fred here, and I'm back, and this time uh, joining me is CEO of Colossal Order, Marina Halikainen. Welcome. Thank you so much, Fred. I am so happy to be here. And we have been working together for the longest of times, right? We have. I, I still remember that demo you sent over to us in uh, 2009, I think it was. So time flies, huh? It definitely does. And uh, that demo did set something in motion, right? <laughs> It did, for sure, you could say that, yeah. And um, 
Cities is turning eight this Friday, actually. So happy birthday to City Skylines. Uh, and um, is there anything you want to add on top of that? Absolutely. I think we should have a look. Happy birthday, City Skylines. Maligayang kaarawan, City Skylines. Hola, soy Leal y feliz cumpleaños a City Skylines. I wish City Skylines a happy birthday. Happy birthday, City Skylines. Happy birthday, City Skylines. Happy birthday, City Skylines. Happy birthday, City Skylines. I really love this game because every time I play it, I can let my creativity flow. I love this game so much that my boss allows me to watch videos collector? of it while working because he knows how much it calms me down. One thing I love about this game is that it finally lets me live out my childhood dreams of being a city planner. It's been a great eight years and I'm excited to see what's going to happen next. Wow, what a game and what a community. Over 500,000 assets and mods created for the games since we started. Exactly, and think about it, five and a half million new players last year, that's basically the population of Finland. Yeah, it's amazing. And uh, we came here, I told everyone early on that we were gonna spill a lot of secrets today, and uh, this is no exception. Do you have any secrets you wanna share today? Definitely, I have been waiting for a few years to share this secret with all of you. So sure. basically, I think for us, isn't it time to take the next step forward? I most definitely think so. Sequel. It's time to start from the beginning. Yet evolve into something new. This city has a story. Envision a world created by you. Peace of rice stuck with my tooth hole. Your chance to shape the future. Create and inspire. Expand way up high and bring life to your creations. New worlds to explore and pursue. I budge it, dude. the creator. You make cities. There's a game pass. Yep. There's the game pass. City Skylines 2 is official. That's why Xbox is presenting us. Okay. Well, I mean, Sega Skylights 2 is big, but. That was a. There wasn't really a lot there. No Vampire the Masquerade, dude. What the fuck? Nothing. Nothing.
None of those types of games. Weird. Weird. Strange, definitely. Well. Uh, because thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. <coughs> Thank you for enjoying my lunch. <laughs> Peace out, Cub Scouts. Bye.